me for a sunbeam to shine for him each day. In every way, try to please him at home, at school, at play. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I've missed you so, 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 so much while I was at school. For those who don't know me, my name is Tiffany. Nice to meet you. So, although we're stuck at home, I hope that you guys are finding fun and cool activities to do with your entire family. Okay, right before we start Children's Church, I need you guys to do three things for me. Wherever you're sitting right now, I need you to find the most comfortable seat. The one that's cozy and the one that you'll stay in for the entire service. Two, I need you guys to turn on your listening ears. And number three, I need you to put on your thinking caps. Okay, come on, do it with me. Turn on your listening ears and put on your thinking caps. Because today, I need you guys to pay very close attention to our children's story, our special music, and our very, very special guest that I can't tell you about because it's a secret. But when you see them, I need you to scream out their name so I know who they are too. So right before we start, we have to pray. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us safe. Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to have Children's Church. And I ask that you please help all the boys and girls to get something useful from today's service. Help us to praise you for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, make sure your singing voices are ready. Show us what the world will he may be found. Call on him while he is near. boys and girls it's praise time and I wanted to join with me some of the courses I'll be singing maybe you've heard them but don't remember or maybe you've never heard them so if you know it sing along with me and if you've never heard them it's a good time to learn so the first one we're gonna sing is everywhere he went talking about Jesus he was doing good ready everywhere he went he was doing good He's the mighty healer, he cleansed the leper. When the people saw him, they started worshiping. Everywhere he went, my Lord, he was doing good. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. He's the mighty healer, he cleansed the leper. When the people saw him, they started worshiping. Everywhere he went, my Lord, he was doing good. The woman of Samaria, the woman, she left, she water pot and she gone. The woman of Samaria, the woman, she left, she water pot and she gone. She said, come see a man who told me all about. She left, she water pot and she gone. Come see a man who told me all about me, left water pot and she gone. The woman at Samaria, the woman, she left she water pot and she gone. The woman at Samaria, the woman, she left she water pot and she gone. He's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able. He's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He heals the brokenhearted and set the captive free. He made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. I know he's able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able 
to carry me through. Hello boys and girls and happy Sabbath. Today I'll be sharing a story about being obedient. In Genesis chapter 2, we see that God had placed Adam and Eve in a very special garden that was very beautiful. The trees were pleasant to look at and the fruit were good to eat from. Adam and Eve were able to eat from all trees except for one tree that God told them not to eat from. It was the tree of good and evil. Adam and Eve took care of the garden every day. They walked and talked with God every day as well. One day, Eve saw the tree that God told them not to eat from. It was beautiful, and so were the fruit. Satan, God's enemy, used an animal called a serpent to lie to Eve about the fruit and about God. Eve ate the fruit. She even shared some with Adam. When they were done eating the fruit, they had a sudden feeling that they had done something very wrong. They even tried to hide what they did from God, but God already knew what had happened because God knows everything. God asked Adam, where are you? Even though he knew where Adam was, Adam responded, responded with, I am hiding because I am afraid. God was sad that they disobeyed him and his rule. He had to ask them to leave the garden, but even though they disobeyed God, God still loved and cared for them. When we disobey our parents, God still loves us too. God's word said in Colossians 3 verse 20, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this will please the Lord. So remember to always obey your parents. Bye for now.
class. Bye! Hello boys and girls. My name is Miss Shannon and today I'm going to be talking to you about exercise. Now, hmm, what is exercise? Exercise is an activity that requires physical effort and it's done to sustain, so to keep or to improve your overall health and fitness. Now, what are some exercises we might see adults doing? I see adults going to the gym. They might go on machines such as a treadmill or an elliptical. Sometimes adults lift weights, but kids don't need to do all those things. Kids can get exercise from running, playing, playing on the playground, swinging, playing different sports such as basketball, hockey, soccer, anything that gets your heart rate going faster and gets you sweating. That's exercise and that's good for you. Now, why is exercise good for kids? Exercise gives you stronger muscles and stronger bones, which in turn is good for when you're older. It can help you to have a leaner body. So that way you don't get overweight because sometimes being too overweight can cause more health problems. Exercise also makes you feel happier, makes you feel good about yourself. When you exercise, there's a chemical in your brain that's released that actually makes you feel happier. You also are at less risk of high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Those things, when you have too much high cholesterol or high blood pressure, it's also not good for you. So all of these things are reasons why exercise is good. So today I want you to go outside and go for a run. Do something that gets your heart rate going faster. That's all for today. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Boys and girls, how are you doing today? I hope that you're having a super califragilistic espialidocious type of Sabbath day today. I hope so. All right, so today the scripture that I want to focus on is Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. Do you guys know what that scripture is all about? Does anyone know? Yes, you're right, the fruit of the Spirit. Awesome. What can you tell me about the fruit of the Spirit? What are the fruit of the Spirit? Joy. I hear you. Very gentle. Oh, wow. That is meekness. Awesome. So you know what I'm talking about when I talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, let me read it right from the Bible. All right. So we are at Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. All right, so those are the fruit of the Spirit. So my demonstration is about, are you demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit in your life, right? No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, whether things are going your way or not going your way, are you demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit in your life? All right, so take your eyes to these two glasses right here, all right? If you look, you'll see I have this glass here which has cool water in it, and then this glass over here that has hot water in it, all right? Now, boys and girls, the cool water demonstrates an environment that you're used to. Things are going your way. Nothing has changed, right? This is an environment that is comfortable for you, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put that tea bag in the, in the water, and you'll notice not a, lot of, not a lot's happening here with that tea bag. So we'll let it sit there for a little bit. We'll see if anything happens there. So over here, we have the hot water, all right? So I'm going to take the tea bag, and I'm going to put it into the hot water, okay? Now, the hot water demonstrates when things get uncomfortable in your life. They often say that's when the truth comes out, all right? Now, if you look at this particular particular um this particular demonstration here you notice that the the water starting to change color there's something coming from the inside of the of the uh the the tea bag and it's pouring out into the glass and you can see the color is actually changing a bit with that uh with with, with the uh the glass right you see the water is uh, is changing in the glass but in this you notice that nothing's really happening there all right so boys and girls the the question is when things are not going your way what is coming from the outside sorry, from the inside, are you demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit? 
That's what Christ expe expects from us. And it's often said that when you're put in an environment, like a hot environment, when it's uncomfortable and things are not going your way, you're asking mom or dad to buy you some candy or a toy, and they say no, and you start to act up because things are not going your way. Are you demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit? I don't think so. No, you're not. So you got to remember that no matter what the situation, you have to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit, right? What's coming from the inside of you? right you see this cup here everything is pouring out from the bag the bag demonstrates you basically right and what's on the inside is starting to pour out into the cup right so what happens is that when you're in a situation that you might not be used to the question is what is pouring out from the inside is it the fruit of the spirit i hope so boys and girls make sure that you're demonstrating the fruit of the spirit in your life all right, I hope that you like my little demonstration, and I hope and I pray that you have a blessed Sabbath day. Bye. Good day, boys and girls. Today, I'm about to tell you the story of Jesus's Last Supper. It was the last night before Jesus died. He had a special supper with his disciples. Because it was special, everyone dressed in their best robe. But in those days, people wore sandals, so their feet were dirty when they sat down to eat. Most of the time, at special meals, someone hired a servant to wash the feet of the people before they ate. But on this night, there were no servants. The disciples hadn't listened to Jesus when he told them that he was going to die. They wanted him to make himself king of their country. They sat and argued about who was going to be the most important and have the most important job in Jesus' kingdom. Jesus had to make them stop and think about themselves and listen to him. He stood up and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he picked up a big bowl of water and started washing the disciples' feet. They stopped talking and stared. They wanted Jesus to be their king, but he was acting like their servant. When Jesus was finished, they sat quietly and listened to what he said. Do you understand? What I did tonight, he asked. The greatest people in my kingdom are the ones who serve each other, the ones who take care of each other. Then Jesus picked up a loaf of bread and started tearing it into pieces. This bread is my body, which I am giving up for you. When you eat it, think about what I've done for you. Next, Jesus picked up a cup of grape juice. This juice is like my blood, which I will bleed for you. When you drink it, remember me. Ever since that night, Christians have repeated this special meal to remember what Jesus said and what he did for us when he died on the cross. We repeat the foot washing that Jesus did with his disciples. This reminds us that we should take care of each other and love each other the same way Jesus loves each one of us. And when we share the bread and juice, we remember that Jesus promised to come back soon. The Bible says, every time you eat the bread and drink the cup, you are telling others about the Lord's death until he comes. This can be found in 1 Corinthians 11.26. Boys and girls, whether you are picking up trash in the church parking lot or helping at a church community service center or picking up offering for the church service or helping to serve 
and clean up after potluck. Remember those who serve others are the greatest in God's kingdom. God bless you. runs 
Pastor Parker, I have a question for you. I've been thinking, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? Hi, boys and girls. We are so happy that we are together again as we continue to worship Jesus as Lord and Savior and Master of our lives. We thank um, Jeremiah in a special way for asking his question today. Um, Pastor Parker, why Jesus had to die for us? And of course, that's a very good question, very important question about salvation, about eternal life, about God's forgiveness and so forth. And so we need to understand there are several reasons why Jesus had to die for us. The first reason is that Jesus wanted to pay the price for us breaking his holy law. Yes, because guess what? Once you break God's law, it means that there is a penalty, there is a consequence that you and I are not qualified to pay for, for ourselves. So in other words, when you read the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, it gives a clearer understanding. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, the wages of sin is death. So you break God's law, the consequence is death. The price is death. The payment is actually death. But because we are all sinners already, because of what Adam did, and because of our own choices in our own lives, guess what? We deserve to die. We deserve to perish. We deserve to go to, to hell. We deserve to be extinct. But guess what? Jesus because of his love and his goodness and he wanted to take care of that for us because we can't of ourselves because of our imperfection guess what he decided to give his life that is holy his life that is righteous his life that is perfect not even an angel in heaven could be qualified to actually die for our sins because guess what an angel doesn't have life within itself. An angel was given life by God. It only takes the life giver in order to pay the price for our sins at the cross of Calvary. Jesus is a life giver. One writer says that he has life in himself and borrowed and derived. In other words, no one gives him life. He is a life itself. He is the creator of every single human being and animal that exists on this earth. And that is why he's qualified in order to die for us. The second reason why he died for us is because he loves us. The Bible says, for God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life so that's the second reason he died for us because he loves us in other words boys and girls God's love for us can never change no matter how good or bad we are his love for us will never ever change the third reason is that God wants to give us eternal life the Bible says I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly and remember in Jesus we receive eternal life right and so it's it's important for us to understand that the third reason is that we receive eternal life God wants to give us eternal life why he died for us the the, th the, the fourth reason is that God wants to give us forgiveness when Jesus died at the cross of Calvary we have the opportunity of receiving forgiveness from God. Amen, boys and girls. And that is why, because of Jesus' death at the cross of Calvary, he says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us from all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The fifth reason is that the reason why Jesus died at the cross of Calvary for us is that he wants us to have what is called relationship with the Father. He wants to connect earth and heaven together in him 
a men, boys and girls. Because guess what boys and girls, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, the relationship between us and God was broken. Because the Bible tells us that sin separates us between us and our God. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2 tells us that, right? And so Jesus dying at the cross of Calvary brings heaven and earth together so that we can have a right relationship with God. And that is why we can pray to God. That is why we can go to Him. And that is why we can have fellowship with Him. And that is why we'll have the opportunity of spending eternal life in heaven and on the earth when it is made new with God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all the angels and all the people of this earth who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. God bless you boys and girls and have a wonderful rest of the Sabbath. Amen. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday. you had your listening ears turned on and your thinking caps strapped on tightly because today's service was amazing let's clap for all the amazing people that performed today so we thank you so 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 much for coming we always love to see your beautiful and handsome faces okay before we go i need you guys Please, 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 if you have any suggestions for Children's Church, send them in. We want to hear your ideas. We love to hear your ideas. Right before we go, we have to pray. So bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us safe. Lord, I ask that you please help us to be here next week for Children's Church, if it's your will, and help us to always praise you for the days of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Bye, boys and girls. Yeah.